Welcome back, everybody. This is what President Biden had to say after this week's deadly shooting in Indianapolis. And if it sounds familiar, it should. This has to end. It's a national embarrassment. It is a national embarrassment what's going on. And it's not only these mass shootings that are occurring. Every single day, every single day, there's a mass shooting in, this, in the United States if you count all those who were Just killed. Just how out of the bad is this national embarrassment? You've seen our recent coverage of several mass shootings this past month. The five on your screen Colorado, Indiana, Georgia, South Carolina, and Texas. Uh, left the most number of people killed, six or more people dead in each of these incidents. Uh, but in the single month since the Atlanta spa shootings, there were actually 53 mass shootings across the country where four or more people were shot, 79 died, and 215 more were hurt. That is according to an NBC News analysis of numbers from the Gun Violence Archive. But that's not the entire picture. If we look at shootings as a whole, there were more than 3,400 just in the past month, 3,400 killing 1,488 people. Beyond those numbers is knowing who those people are. 363 of them were kids. 106 of them have died. One of the youngest victims is Ziana, a seven-year-old who was shot while playing outside in Charlotte, North Carolina two weeks ago. Fortunately, this brave little girl survived, and now she's speaking out against gun violence. I think they should stop doing this because kids are going to get hurt somehow. They need to stop doing this. Like how they hurt at me. They need to stop doing this and hurting other kids and people. Ah. So despite those numbers, it is always Groundhog's Day in Congress when it comes to guns. Democrats demand action. Republicans block anything from happening. Joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman uh, Dina Titus from Nevada. She recently filed legislation that would ban high capacity uh, magazines. Congresswoman, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, hearing that little girl's voice after being shot and recovering, it is just heartbreaking that that is her reality and the reality of so many Americans across this country. All of us, it's all, all of our realities. Why can't things get done? Well, that's so true. Sometimes the smallest voices can make the loudest noise. So I'm glad she's speaking up. You know, I, I've talked to families like that. I had the October 1 shooting in my district at the country music concert. 60 people killed, hundreds wounded. And you talk to families and, you know, they appreciate prayers and thoughts, but what they really want is action. And yet since then, um, some two and a half, three and a half years ago, uh, nothing's happened. Let me show you what our current president was doing eight years ago to the day. Let's play it. A few months ago, in response to too many tragedies, including the shootings of a United States Congresswoman, Gabby Gifford, who's here today, and the murder of 20 innocent school children and their teachers, this country took up the cause of protecting more of our people from gun violence. A few minutes ago, a minority in the United States Senate decided it wasn't worth it. They blocked common sense gun reforms, even while these families looked on from the Senate gallery. It's a cycle. He was standing there behind the president at the time, disappointed that they would not pass legislation for background checks after so many shootings, shootings of young children in Connecticut. And again, I ask you why things cannot get done in Washington when it comes to gun reform, when it comes to gun legislation, when it comes to gun control. Well, remember, the Democrats in the House have passed two bills already, and we've introduced others. One was to have background checks, which is supported by some 90 percent of the public, even if the Republicans in office are not supporting it. I can't explain their reasons. Uh, maybe they're worried about being primaried. But we've passed those out of the House. We've introduced bump stocks, uh, high-capacity magazines, assault weapon bans. 
we are working. I'm in my office here on the weekend ready to do something, and they just block it every single time. I don't know if they're not hearing the voices of people in their district who suffer from these traumas and lose loved ones. It, it, it boggles the mind, and it's something we could do because it's shown that background checks do save lives. Um, it's interesting, right, because oftentimes we point to the NRA as to the influence they have over the Republican Party. We know the legislation that you just talked about that passed the House is not going to get anywhere in the Senate. I mean, we full well know that. We know bump stocks were used in the shooting that you just mentioned in your state, in Nevada, um, in Vegas. Um, we talked a heck of a lot about bump stocks at the time. Again, nothing was done. Um, Here's what they're saying about the NRA from the Daily Beast. The NRA is now hardly the empty shell of its former self. Over the last few years, the NRA has lost massive amounts of money amid internal corruption scandals and a barrage of lawsuits that have shaken the faith of even its most devout members. In the 2020 election, the group spent a fraction of what it did in 2016. And in January, the embattled organization filed for bankruptcy. So if it's not the NRA anymore, if we can't point to the NRA as a lobby for the Republican Party, then what is it? Well, you were just talking in the previous section about some of the members of Congress who are extremists. I guess they're worried about the, uh, being primaried and it's in the culture in their mm. districts. But I'm not as pessimistic as you are. You've seen recently Senator Murphy talking about maybe bringing on about 10 members of the Senate. And we've got a president now who led the fight against assault weapons, who has already signed several executive agreements putting in place uh, provisions against ghost guns and also setting up some uh, standard legislation for states to enact for those uh, extreme risk situations. How confident, um, Congresswoman, before I let you go, are you in getting your high capacity magazine ban passed? Well, we are going to work very hard. It's like I said, we get letters from people. We hear stories. You saw those folks staying in the hotel just wanting to know what happened to their loved ones. Public sentiment is on our side. And so we won't stop until we get this done. And we'll move it out of the House and then put pressure on the Senate. And hopefully we'll find some allies there. Congresswoman Dina Titus of Nevada, thank you for joining me on this Saturday. I appreciate it. Uh, it is clear Congress is not the answer when it comes to guns. So how about the state and local level? One recent mass shooting in Boulder, Colorado, left 10 people dead after the gunman used an AR-15 style weapon nearly three years before this shooting. The city of Boulder actually voted to ban assault weapons. And just 10 days before this tragedy, the measure was blocked in court by an NRA back lawsuit. As the LA Times reports, quote, while there are signs that the influence of the NRA, which has filed for bankruptcy, is declining nationally, pro-gun rights forces remain strong in a lot of states. Want to bring in Chris Brown, president of the Brady Campaign, a nonprofit that advocates for uh, gun control. Chris, thanks for joining us on this. Um, let's thanks talk so about the NRA, me. because I did mention that. Yeah, absolutely. I mentioned that to the congresswoman a little bit earlier. It seems like on a national level, the NRA obviously doesn't have the influence that they once had. But on the local level, do they still have pull? Uh, they, they have some pull. I, I do want to just uh, commend Representative Titus as a great champion. I met with her in her office after Vegas, after the horrific shooting there. And the string that we've had since then, 140 mass shootings just this year, means we must act to change the current situation we find ourselves in, which is we have a public health epidemic. The NRA, as you note, is in bankruptcy. It was morally bankrupt before this. But there are a lot of state groups that have cropped up that are fueled by the NRA. And even in bankruptcy, they still provide talking points. They still provide some support for what they do. And what they're trying to do is reframe our current understanding of the Second Amendment from one in which um, we can have reasonable gun laws and uh, ensure responsible gun ownership to guns in every Buddy's hands everywhere all the time. And 